Hello there, good people of the world. My name is Cristana. If you are new here, welcome to my YouTube channel, Bella Renavare by Cristana. If you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell so you get all the latest videos that I put out. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. Thank you guys so much for always supporting me and being loving. I just, I appreciate you guys. That's all I can say. I cannot explain to you how much I appreciate you, but I do. So today we are gonna do something really cool that I have never done before. I have a client and this is for her son. And this is a dresser right here. just kind of your run of the mill, kind of like Ashley furniture, whatever kind of dresser. It's not Ashley furniture, but it's something similar. You know, one of these modern day furniture people. So her son's room, the theme is cars and kind of a rustic feel. And so they came up with a really awesome idea. They came up with the idea to make this look like an old toolbox. So I have a picture I'm gonna show you because we're gonna try to recreate. We're gonna try to do a faux finish on here and try to recreate, hold on. Something similar to this. So it's like a, hold on. It's like a vintage toolbox, right? So we are going to, and not only that, but I got, hold on. I also got a little snap-on sticker, so that way it kind of coincides with that. I got the sticker, we were thinking about doing the emblem, but it, her son is three, three I think, and or four. Anyways, we just didn't want him to run the risk of pulling it off. I don't know, I may have to try to like weather this up a little bit to match everything, but I also got this hardware because I thought that this would look really good and industrial on all of these to look like a toolbox. We're gonna be using Country Chic's paint today and they have this color right here and it is called Poppy. So we're going to use this, which is a brighter red. They also have a texture powder that we are going to use and mix with a couple of their browns to make a rusty kind of feel, look. I think that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna try to make some faux rust, some make this bad boy look like a aged toolbox. So, if you guys want to see that, stay right here. Don't leave. Stay. The first thing I did was remove the old hardware. We wanted to get hardware on here that's going to look like a toolbox. So I want to show you something that you can do. You can remove the hardware and you can take those screws and you can put them back into the drawer and that can be used to open and close the drawers. Or what I'm gonna show you here in a second is you can just unscrew it from the knob and then just leave it in there. Everything's different, each handle's different. I am also going to be plugging these holes with a two-part wood filler, which is usually Bondo. What I like to do is I like to put painter's tape behind the holes so that way when I push that Bondo in there, it's not going to, it's gonna stop. So you wanna mix the two-part wood filler really well and then there's also a hardener so i'm going to take a spreader a plastic spreader and i'm going to put that on a piece of cardboard and then i'm going to put a little bit of that hardener in there so some of the bondos it'll actually turn your wood filler into a red color this one doesn't but this is a german brand so you want to fold those into each other and mix them into each other but you don't have a ton of time to work you have about 10 minutes before it starts setting so don't over mix because then you may waste some of it so i'm going to take that spreader and i'm going to push it into the pre-existing hole and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just spread a thin layer over that hole so that way when i sand it back it's going to be smooth and you won't be able to see it. Once the two-part wood filler has dried and has set, I come back about an hour later and just sand it down, and that way I can remove it. I am using my five-inch Orbital by Surf Prep just because it gets it off faster, and I wanted to just hurry up and get it off of there because it started raining. 
Now I'm going to clean the entire piece with Greenies Strip and Clean Cleaner. What this does is it's going to clean the entire piece and it's going to prepare it for my paint. So I like to clean the entire piece inside and out first, and then I'm going to go over it with clean water and a clean rag just to get any residue off. Then I'm going to scuff sand the entire piece with a super fine 10 millimeter rad pad. You wanna use about a 220 grit, a little bit higher. All you're trying to do is just scuff the surface to give the paint something to bite to. Now I will be using Country Chic's all-in-one paint, but I prepare every piece pretty much the same exact way. I clean everything really well, and then I usually do a scuff sand on something that is shiny. So this piece had a big shine to it, so that is why I am scuff sanding it as well. You can never over prep. I use a microfiber cloth to get any of the dust residue off that may be on the piece before I go in and paint it. You can also use a damp rag if you want, but I'm gonna show you something really quick. So because I've plugged the holes, we need to be able to open and close the drawers, right? So I use painter's tape, I'm gonna take a piece, and what I do is I put the sticky side on in the inside and then I fold over the top part, and that way that is a tab and it acts as a pull tab. So I do it on both ends of the drawer and this allows me to open and close the drawers easily when I don't have a hole for the screw or I need to be able to open and close them when I'm painting and all the things. The first product I'm gonna use is by Country Chic, and this is their paint called Licorice. Uh, I tried to show you what the, the name is, but clearly we have gotten into a fight with another paint jar, so. But anyways, it's their black, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and their texture powder, and we're gonna mix that together. And what my goal is here is to mix this so that it goes on the base of the piece so that later on we'll be able to scrape it back and expose some of the wood and this black underneath so that it looks like aged faux rust. So I'm gonna mix them up and then you're going to mix until you get the consistency that I'm gonna show you in a second. It's fairly thick. And so I'm going to do that and then randomly place this texture medium mix all over the piece to kind of emulate the rust. So I looked at the picture that I showed you guys earlier and you wanna put it, I put a lot more on the bottom and then I randomly put little spots on the top so that it looked like it was rusting and aging naturally. You can tell when the texture medium and paint mix have dried because you see right here that's a little bit wet and the lighter spots are dry. You wanna wait for it to completely dry before you do the next part. For this next part, I wanted to knock down some of those high peaks. So I am just lightly going over it with my three x four electric ray. So if you're gonna do this by hand or something, you wanna use a high grit sandpaper and just knock down the high peaks, but you don't wanna get rid of all the texture. Next, I'm going to use Country Chic's Poppy and I'm going to go over the entire piece. I'm gonna do about two coats on here. It really depends on your piece and the color of your piece. Now, reds are very highly pigmented and a lot of times they have a clear base, so they do need extra coats. But I did two coats of this before I went in and started pulling back a little bit of that texture and I'm gonna show you that here in a second.
Now, I waited for this paint to dry, but I didn't wait for it to dry for super long. So like as soon as it was dry to the touch, I went in and did this. Because this is an all-in-one paint, it's gonna make it easier for you to do it at that point versus waiting because then it's gonna start curing and there's a built-in top coat. So once this paint dried to the touch, I went in with a plastic scraper and I just started scraping gently the areas where the peaks were a little bit higher. The reason why I knocked down a little bit of the texture earlier was because I wanted it to have more of an authentic look and I felt like if I was grabbing onto more of the higher peaks, it would have pulled back way more of the texture than I wanted. So I want this to look spotty like it is a toolbox that is chipped or is worn. And so that's why I'm taking a plastic scraper. You could use a metal one, but if you do, make sure you use a light hand so that you're not scraping away too much. So I'm just putting this flat to the surface and I'm gently scraping where the texture is. And this is gonna be a little bit more close up so you can see. Now, in some of these areas, if you want to dig a little bit of that texture out, you can take the corner of that plastic scraper and you can scrape a little bit of it away. So just go slow and step back and kind of look at it so you don't overdo it. And that's how I know when I am done. I always step back and look at it in stages so that way you don't overdo it it's a lot easier to pull a little bit more back than it is to put you can't really put it back you could paint over it if you do take too much away so just remember to step back a little bit every once in a while to see what it looks like Once I was done chipping away at it with the plastic scraper, I took my sander and I went over the entire piece. What this is gonna do is it's gonna pull back some of those areas so you can see the wood underneath, which is gonna give you a brown color and it's going to look like it is rust. That is one of the reasons why I did not use a primer with this. Normally with reds, using a gray primer is a good idea because you can use less coats of your red, but I did not want any white or gray primer showing. So that is why I didn't use a primer. Now I'm going to use Country Chic's Leather Bound and I'm going to create some faux rust. So I'm taking a mister bottle and I am going to spray the area first and just dab lightly with a cheap chip brush where the paint is. And then I'm going to take the mister bottle and I'm going to spray it and allow it to drip down. And this is going to give it kind of a diluted brown, but then it's going to drip down like rust. You can't create a toolbox if you don't have the tool logo. My client wanted to snap on and so I just bought a little sticker and put it on here and I just made sure that there was an area that didn't have texture on it and I just burnished it on there really well and then when I top coat it I top coat over that sticker as well. This is an all-in-one, I am going to top coat it. So I'm using Country Chic's Clear Coat. What this does is it actually richens the colors and you'll see that once I apply it on here. This is also for their small sun and I wanna make sure that it has as much protection as possible to withstand and hold up for the longevity of his, you know, however long he wants us in his room, as well as just, you know, I have kids so I get it. What I did is I took one of Country Chic's synthetic brushes and I just take, took the top coat and I put it in a separate container and I just take this and I dip the brush in and wipe off all the excess and I just go with long strokes going in the same direction to apply this in thin layers. I ended up putting three coats of this on the piece just because I wanted to make sure that it is super protected. Normally, if I'm going to redo the top, I do it before I paint a piece, but we weren't really sure what color we wanted to do, so we wanted to get the finish on the piece first to be able to visualize. We are going to refinish it to a Java color, but I like to use cling wrap and tape, and I just tape around the, the base of it, or the 
piece that is already painted so that we can protect it. I am using a chemical stripper first because this is a factory finish. I'm using my plastic scoop scraper that I always use. Remember, I'm in Germany, so that stripper that I used is one that is only available in Germany. I don't not tell you guys because I'm trying to make it a secret. It's just that I live in Germany and that's the only people that can get it is people who are over here. So I am going to take my plastic scraper and I'm gonna get everything off. Super satisfying. I do not go in directly with a sander to try to strip pieces off, especially with factory finishes. I always use a chemical stripper first, then I sand. So I'm gonna start with a 100 grit, and then I'm gonna use a 120 and then a 220 grit. And I am using my three x four electric ray to get any of the residual off, any of the pre-existing. After I strip, I always use mineral spirits to neutralize the stripper before I sand but that is what I'm doing. Now I'm using Crystal Lax Java water-based gel stain. What I really like about this is it's super concentrated. And so I'm going to add some water because it is water-based so that I can kind of visualize what color I want. I want to start lighter and that's why I'm diluting it. And then you can just add layers when it dries. So I'm taking a cheap chip brush and I'm just going to brush it on and then I'm going to wipe it back with an applicator pad and I'm going to go with the grain. So if you can see the top of this, the grain is going that way. And then you'll see me on the other side. I go with the grain, which is the opposite direction. And I'm going to allow it to completely dry and do a couple layers of this until it's the color that I want. I'm going to use Crystal Lax Polyurethane, which is a water-based non-yellowing top coat. You can see right here, it is a cl crystal clear top coat. But before I do this, I want to make sure that I go in with a tack cloth, but I need to tell you something that's really important. When you are using this top coat or any water-based top coat, you need to make sure that your tack cloth does not have any silicone in it. If your tack cloth has silicone in it, you cannot use it with water-based sealers. It will cause adhesion problems, just so that you are aware. That is something that I have recently learned and I wanted to share it with you guys. If you're always learning something new in this business and I honestly had no idea. So if you have a tack cloth, make sure you're looking at it. The ones that I'm going to link below do not have silicone in it, but make sure that you pay attention because if it does have silicone in it, it's not something that you should be using with a water-based top coat. Now I am using a, an applicator sponge, which you can get many different companies carry this. And what I'm doing is I am doing thin coats and I'm going with the grain. I did wait 24 hours after I stained this to make sure it was fully dry just because it was water-based over wood. And I wanted to make sure it was completely dry and that we had the color that we wanted before we top coat. So I did three layers of the top coat on this and I sanded lightly in between coats and used my tack cloth to get the dust off. And I just applied this and then that was the last step. All right, everybody, here is the piece finished. Looks like an old toolbox. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, everything I use is in the description below. Till next time, guys. Happy creating. Bye!